Hello everyone, just a quick disclaimer before we get started. I don't claim that my builds are the best in the game, and I'm sure there are better ways to optimize some of them, but be aware that I do tend to get my builds at least endgame viable. This includes things like arbitration, steel path, idle on hunts, etc. Now that this is out of the way, these timestamps have been left here and in the description for your convenience. Feel free to skip around, but I'll start with the basics first just in case people don't know how to play this frame. So starting with the stats, armor is 175, this puts you at a 36.8% damage reduction. For energy we have 150, this puts you at 225 energy at max rank. For health you're looking at a stock 100, 300 at max. For shield you're looking at 150, this puts you at 450 at max. For sprint speed you're looking at the highest sprint speed in the game currently at 1.4. He likes to run. Goss comes from the disruption on Sedna. His parts are a C rotation, but because the way rotations work on disruptions, C rotations repeat after a certain point, allowing you to get a chance every few minutes. At the time of this video, he has no prime, so that is that. Moving on to the abilities, starting with the passive. Moving generates an electrical current that fills Goss's battery. Shields recharge up to 120% faster, while the recharge delay is up to 80% shorter based on the battery level. So this is the battery. It fills and drains from 0 to 100% as you do things. This red line right here is actually the 80% line. You can only go past 80% when his fourth ability is active. I'll get into that later. So as I move around, the battery fills 0.5% per meter traveled. The battery is the gauge which determines the strength of some abilities. I'll go into the specifics of those bonus strengths when I go over each ability, but all you need to know is that keeping this higher is beneficial. Some abilities raise the battery, and some lower it. Moving on to his first ability, Mac Rush. Burst into a hyper sprint, bullying over enemies and charging the battery. Crashing into solid objects generates a powerful shockwave. Hold to rush continuously. So this pairs well with Goss's passive. Tapping it raises the gauge by 10%, and holding it raises it further per meter traveled because of his passive. It also raises by 1% per enemy hit. When a surface is hit, it will cause an explosion, dealing impact damage, and knocking enemies down. This will instead cause slash damage if his second ability is active. You can also sprint over water in Planes of Eidolon and Orb Valis. If you Mac Rush through his third ability, it will add cold or heat damage to the rush explosion. Mac Rush costs half energy if you are past the red line on the gauge by using his fourth ability. I'll touch on those synergies again as I go over those abilities. So the rush speed is affected by sprint speed modifiers, drain is affected by ability efficiency, while drain per second is affected by both ability efficiency and duration. Enemies being knocked down in an area around Goss as he dashes is affected by ability range, as well as the explosion range upon contact. Explosion damage is affected by ability strength. Moving on to his second ability, kinetic plating. Generate armor plating that converts a portion of absorbed kinetic damage physical, heat, cold, and blast, into energy. Also protects Goss from being staggered or knocked down. Damage resistance is relative to the battery level. So the physical types mentioned are impact, puncture, and slash. The fact that this stops Goss from being staggered seriously helps him. His ability is actually quite straightforward, but does have a couple of weird things to it. So when I apply kinetic plating, I am given a minimum amount of damage reduction, which increases up to 100% based on the battery level. Yeah, that's right. 100% damage reduction. That is incredibly strong. For every second this is active, I lose 1% battery. For each hit I take, my battery goes down anywhere between 1 and 5%, depending on the severity of the attack while also gaining energy. Goss gains 0.25% battery per melee hit while active, and while past the red line on Goss's gauge using his fourth ability, he gains 100% extra base melee damage and staggers on every melee hit. The fact that energy restoration per hit and some damage reduction is applied even at an empty battery means it's a good way to stockpile energy while also being a bit harder to kill. His kit is pretty geared towards spamming abilities, so the energy restore can definitely help. If you aren't moving too fast so enemies can actually hit you, which in a way I guess kind of defeats the purpose of being a fast frame. It is what it is. As mentioned previously, while kinetic plating is active, the explosion of Mac Rush causes slashes. Moving on to his third ability, Thermal Sunder, siphoning kinetic energy from the area, charging the battery and inflicting cold status on nearby enemies. Hold reverses the process, draining the battery and inflicting heat status on nearby enemies. So natively, the cold version hits for less and the heat one hits for more. Depending on your battery level is how much this ability hits for overall. 
The cold version gives 10% battery per cast, and the heat drains 10% battery per cast. The cold version can freeze enemies in place instantly on cast if above the red line on his battery from his fourth ability. If you're not above the red line on the battery, it will take two casts. The heat causes a heat proc on all enemies, and heat, of course, reduces enemy armor by half. When combining heat and cold together on an enemy, they will receive blast damage and be either knocked back or pulled. Casting cold and then heat will push enemies, and casting heat and then cold will pull enemies. The status proc that gets put on an enemy when combined to make blast is determined by what was last cast. So if I cast heat first and then cold, they will have the heat proc removed and the cold added. If a heat proc was removed to combine the elements, the remaining heat proc damage will be added to the blast damage. Typically, the minimal amount of damage this adds gets negated by the fact that some enemies resist certain elements, so in actual gameplay, it's not too important on which one you cast first. However, that being said, it is worth noting that recasting the heat version multiple times will stack its damage, and then if you cast a cold version after multiple heat casts, the damage stacks for the final hit, increasing it significantly. Because it seems logical to want to spam the heat version before cold, it would make sense to mention that this ability does not drain the battery when at 100% redline. I'll go into that more later. When the blast proc happens, it strips up to 100% of enemy armor based on the battery, 100% battery being 100% armor strip. Now that all the confusing stuff is out of the way, let's take a step back and talk about how this actually leaves an area of effect on the ground when cast, which gradually shrinks over time based on duration. These do damage when enemies are inside, and Goss can have 4 fire and 4 cold AoEs on the ground at any time, so 8 total. Drain is affected by ability efficiency, initial radius is affected by range, duration of the area as well as how quickly it gets smaller is affected by ability duration, so lower duration means it gets smaller quicker. Status duration is also affected by ability duration, which means heat procs last longer. Damage is affected by ability strength as well as the current battery level. This is the subsumed ability when given to the Helminth. Moving on to his fourth ability, Redline. Push Goss's battery beyond the Redline, supercharging his abilities and setting fire rate, attack speed, reload speed, and holster rate into overdrive. When past the Redline, bolts of arcing electricity dance periodically from Goss, exploding in mass when the ability is deactivated. So, just as the description says, you get fire rate, attack speed, holster speed, reload speed. When you activate, enemies around you get knocked down. Activating this allows you to go past the red line on his battery gauge, which offers up some unique strengths to his other abilities. This adds a new mechanic to the gauge. While you are above the red line, this percent goes up, increasing the fastest while at a full battery. If you are below the red line, this percent will decrease. While active, 2% of the battery is drained per second, which means you'll need to press other abilities or stay moving to raise it. While above the red line, this ability sends out periodical streams of damage that does mostly impact, but also does some puncture. When the ability is deactivated, a bunch of them are sent out. Number of projectiles and accuracy of them become better with a higher battery level above red line. So I'm going to touch on the synergies with this ability again briefly to make sure they are ingrained in your head as they are important. When above the red line, Thermal Sunder instantly freezes enemies, and the blast permanently strips armor based off of the battery. So at 100% battery, it's a full strip, which is super strong. At 100% red line, nothing even drains the battery. So that's good to know too. Additionally, Mac Rush energy cost is halved when cast beyond the red line. When using kinetic plating, you are granted 100% extra base melee damage bonus and 100% chance to stagger enemies hit by melee. I know this is a lot to take in for his abilities, but at the end of the build I go over, I show the general idea of how he works without having to hurt your brain. Moving into his ability augments, which he actually only has one, Mac Crash, Mac Crash augment, impact shockwave leaves behind a vacuum that sucks in enemies within 8 meters. I would say if the range on this was higher, it would be more valuable, and the reason for this is because Zephyr and Nidus have access to very good pulls. Difference is, is for this I need to waste a mod slot to get it, and Goss wants a lot of other mods as is. I'm not saying this is a bad augment, for a melee focus this is actually not bad, but for my use case I have no need for it, as my abilities alone kill everything without even having to look at the enemies. At this point in the video, I like to answer the question, is this frame steel path viable? Can it run arbitrations? Is it part of the Eidolon hunts? Goss probably wouldn't be ideal for Eidolon hunts, but he does exceedingly well in steel path in arbitrations, being able to steamroll most content. The biggest setback that he has to deal with is energy. He can be a very spammy frame 
in terms of abilities to keep his battery and red line up. By the time you get a good battery and red line level, you may find yourself out of energy for good use of Thermal Sunder, and frankly, that's pretty normal for him, unfortunately. This causes you to absolutely need things like Flow, Arcane Energize, and Xenaric to make him work with the ability spam. So just a quick disclaimer before we get into the builds, as I'm only doing one. Uh, Goss has many different ways to be built. I only play him in specific ways though, and the other ways to play him are not difficult to build for, so I don't touch on those builds. I touch on the ones that I bring into higher level stuff. I, I find builds that are completely into speed are overkill, since I typically outrun most players in my sessions without me needing to be on a speed frame. I find building him around his nuke while also making his gunplay effective tends to be the best way to build him for my playstyle. And with the disclaimer out of the way, we're going to go into the first build. So this build is exactly what it says. It, it does everything. This build is designed for the harder content in the game, being able to utilize armor strip, damage reduction, and quicker fire rate and reload speeds to just absolutely destroy everything. In terms of helmet, you're going to want absolutely nothing. This build works without it. I gear this build towards his entire kit. If you want to utilize helmet on him, this build is probably not for you. In terms of forma, you're looking at two forma. You'll add two Naraman and do not replace anything that he comes with. Unlike, you know, what I did. I did not mean to get rid of that Vazarin. It is what it is. You only need two forma. So now we're going to go over the mods, uh, starting with the Aura and Exilus, just because I typically use them together. So I chose Radar mods for this one, since I seem to get more benefit out of it, especially in something like a survival. However, if you have energy issues, since he uses a lot of abilities, I would recommend Energy Siphon and Coaction Drift. Alternatively, you could also run Sprint Boost, Aura, and Rush if you just wanted to be faster. In terms of other mods, I chose not to run Natural Talent, but Natural Talent is a huge quality of life on Goss, so pick your poison on what you want to get rid of, but bear with me as I explain what each mod does and why I chose it. Starting with the first mod, we have Augur Secrets. The reason why we're doing this is because we have Overextended, which is getting rid of uh, a lot of strength. So we have that and Armor Intensify to bring our strength back up to 100%. Because if we didn't do this, our damage reduction would not be 100%. And we want that. That is not something that we can live without. Next mod, we have Stretch. We're going to be trying to get his range up as much as possible. The reason for this is because we want his Thermal Sunder to actually be stripping a fair group of enemies, plus this thing actually kills as well, so it's good to have. We pair that with Overextended, of course, which gives us even more range, so we're at 235. We have Prime Flow because he sucks a lot of energy, and if we're getting energy from a ton of sources but we have nowhere to put it, what good is having all that energy? So we have Prime Flow so we can just bank a ton. Next we have Constitution. You could just use Message here if you wanted to. Obviously, Constitution is 4% more, and if you're doing the two formas, well, it fits anyway, so you might as well do it. Because Redline, all of his, like, fire rate, attack speed, reload speed, holster speed, all that actually goes off of duration, and we want to be able to have these buffs up for a little while. Instead of fire rate, you know, increasing with strength, it actually increases with duration, so duration is actually a bit more important than strength, as long as your strength is a negative. That being said, we also have Prime Continuity to bring it up even further. Next we have Streamline, because we just need things to be a little bit cheaper. He is constantly spamming abilities, at least the way I play them, and he just needs it. Moving into Arcanes, we have Arcane Energize. Uh, I would say anything beyond this is a bonus. I just use Guardian in case I start taking a lot of damage, and my damage reduction isn't that high from Kinetic Plating uh, when I would otherwise want it to be. Energize is definitely something you're gonna want. This, he just uses too much energy for this to just not be here. In terms of misc requirements, I would say something uh, that benefits from high fire rate and quicker reloads, because the build will help both of those things. I prefer Goss's weapons simply because they are good and have passives from being in his hands. These are the builds that I'm using if you are interested. Operator School, you're definitely going to want to run Zeneric. Like I mentioned earlier, Goss is just too freaking expensive to not be getting energy from as many sources as you can. So for a quick how to use, basically, I mean, 
I already explained how all the abilities work, however, it's kind of, you know, a shit show. Unless you can see how everything works all at once. So basically, you press 4 and 2. This will give you your extra fire rate, it'll give you your damage reduction, it'll give you all sorts of good things. And then you basically just get your battery up, so your red line goes up, and then... The way to do that is obviously by spamming 1, or by just pressing 3 occasionally, because that also brings it up, and everything is frozen. So, from here, what you can do is you can nuke everything, because now it's not going to have armor. So, that stripped all the armor. So, the way that I would say is best to use Thermal Sunder is by hitting a few heat, and then hitting the cold. And the reason why you do this is because if you continuously press the heat, you will be given multiple heat procs, which then adds damage when you finally hit the cold version of the ability. So pretty much that's all it is. I mean, when you're when you're charging your four and two up, you can use things like guns to, since you're gonna have pretty strong guns, obviously you'd want to have some sort of um, fallback when you're not using your abilities, which is exactly what I have. Then once everything is maxed, you can just go in, hold three a couple times for heavier targets, and then press three and just tap three, and that absolutely just nukes everything. This build is incredibly strong. So now I'm gonna go and do some gameplay of me actually using it properly. So here I just demonstrate that once you're at your full potential on your red line, you can just clap everything to death. So basically the way it works is you just hold three a few times and then you press three and then everything will, it, all those stacks will get added from the heat and then it'll just strip all their armor and deal all that damage from the heat procs at once. So as you can see, that's pretty effective. And then here I have an acolyte spawn. So basically you can strip acolyte armor, which is pretty damn strong. As you can see, I just absolutely destroy him with the Redeemer. I mean, obviously the Redeemer is great, but when you can pair it with an armor strip, it's very good. And here I'm pretty much just chilling to demonstrate the fact that he has 100% damage reduction, and his fourth ability has actually really good crowd control, like more than I really thought it was. And that is pretty much the Goss build. So that is the complete Goss Guide. Goss is incredibly strong and can seemingly do anything with the right setup. If you enjoyed the video or helped in any way, please leave a like. And if you're looking forward to future content like this, subscribe and stay tuned. If I missed anything or you'd like to leave some feedback, leave it down in the comments. I appreciate all the support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.